Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to build your own SharePoint knowledge base. What I mean by a SharePoint knowledge base is an area which has actually got sub layers to it. Now, you could actually build this out with as many layers as you like, but the way I've built mine is that I'm going to have a department specific layer like this, and this is allowing me to choose my first sort of uh, department category to move into finding specific uh, content and articles related to different departments. So it could be my support department, my development department, my project management department, or I'm actually just going to select on my consulting department. Within the department, I can then see um, core knowledge articles relating to things like how to run a requirements workshop or how to give proper estimates to potential clients or how to deliver presentations or public speaking. So these are all knowledge articles that have been created to help uh, the staff around my organization do their job better um, and follow kind of correct best practices. So I'm going to click on how to run a workshop and within here, this is a templated knowledge article now, so all my knowledge articles are going to look the same. There's an image of a bit of title across the top. Um, there's a useful contact as well across the top right-hand corner, as well as a bit of text to say what is this knowledge article, what does it contain, what you should use it for, uh, and what it is not. So again, a bit of text maybe just to sort of say um, it's not related to training workshops, for example. So maybe click on this link to go to the training workshop page. I could list also some other related pages on here if I wanted to, as well as some useful links um, which might be on a third party uh, website, which could be useful, as well as some FAQs to help answer any questions people might have, and useful documents, things like forms um, that might relate to the particular knowledge article. So essentially, these knowledge articles are going to really help our organization share information and understand um, how we work. So let's take a look at how we start building this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go and create our SharePoint site. I'm going to do this by going to office.com, which is the home page of Microsoft 365, searching for SharePoint in the top bar and selecting the SharePoint app. Um, from this page, I can create my SharePoint site by clicking on this button here. Um, if you don't see the button here, um, it means that you need to be able to create the site from the SharePoint admin center, um, which you would need the SharePoint admin role uh, first to be able to achieve. So I'm going to click on the Create Site, and then I've got two options here, Team Site and Communication Site. Now, um, I would typically create my knowledge base as a communication site. The reason being is communication sites are much better at creating portals for subject-specific uh, content rather than team sites, which are, are specifically more for collaboration of teams, and they don't have the same range of layouts options that we're going to be looking at today. So I'm going to create my communication site, and it's going to ask for a site name. So I'm going to call this my knowledge base. Um, that's just double checking that the URL exists um, or, or not already and it's fine it doesn't exist yet so I'm now going to click on finish which is going to create me my knowledge base site. Now what this is going to do is automatically going to create me um, a standard issue SharePoint site which uh, just has the basic kind of template applied to it. We're going to come back and we're going to edit the home page later the reason being is that it's much easier to create the home page once you've got a little bit of content, some actual pages which sit underneath um, the, the actual home page. So the next step I'm going to take is actually create my department page template. Now the department page template is almost like if you imagine the layers of this is going to be the knowledge bases like our um, home page. The next, uh, and that's where you actually select the department. The next sort of layer down from that is actual department page in which we're going to have our, our sort of buttons which are going to take us to specific knowledge um, articles. So we want to create this as a, as a page template again because we're going to reuse this multiple times for different departments within this specific knowledge base. So to do this, I'm first going to create a page. So I'm going to click on new, I'm going to click on page, and I'm actually just going to start from a blank page template just because I want to create this completely from scratch. And I'm going to choose a, a sort of layout which is going to look um, sort of quite nice. So I'm going to click on the pencil across the top. And I've got a couple of different options up here. So we could change the banner across the top to be maybe uh, something like this. So we've just got a title that completely overlays the image. 
It could be a plane if you didn't want to use imagery here, uh, a color block, or even uh, an overlap as the standard. Now, I'm going to choose color block because I think this actually stands out a little bit better, um, and it more really makes sure that it differentiates the difference between a department site as part of the knowledge base and your knowledge article. So within uh, the sort of title up here, so this might be the name of the, the department. Um, so we might want to put up here, say, human resources. Um, and then beneath this, um, we can then start building out a bit more of the content of the page. So I'm going to actually build this out as a bit more of, of kind of um, a little bit of sort of text um, on here. And then I have links underneath which are actually going to take me to my knowledge article pages. Um, so what I'm going to do actually, I need to get some uh, Lorem Ipsum text. So I've just gone to Google, typed in Lorem Ipsum generator, and I'm using the, uh, the lipsum.com just to generate a little bit of text because as we're kind of padding out our pages, it's great just to have a little bit of Lorem Ipsum um, so it's got a bit of fake text so we can see what the page looks like as we're starting to build it out. So back on here now, this might be say like a little bit of welcoming text. Um, Quite often with the knowledge base, especially the department areas, you might want to include a bit of text to say what uh, you can find here or something like that. So it's a little bit about what the actual knowledge base for human resources is going to contain. Now that paragraph's a bit lengthy, so I'm going to shorten that down a bit. And I might just change the background color of this section as well. So sections, you can change the background colors by clicking on the edit section button here on the left hand side. And then you can see some predefined colors based on the color palette of your SharePoint site. Um, I, I do actually have a separate video which talks about changing the color palette of your SharePoint site if you would like to do this. Uh, but it's just a stock uh, one for now. So I'm just going to click on green um, just to make it a little bit more. Well, it's going to stand out a bit better. Um, so there we go. So now we've got um, our title of a page, a little bit of body text, um, and actually then beneath this, I'm going to add in my navigational links. So to do this, I'm going to click on add new section, and I'm actually going to use the full width section. The reason being is I want to use the hero web part, but rather than having them as sort of um, tiles like this, I want to use them as layers. So underneath here, I've then got the layers, which are these are going to be linking out to my individual knowledge uh, pages. Now, there's all sorts of other ways um, that you could actually link out to your knowledge pages. There's this hero web part, but you've also got things like quick links as well. So you could have quick links uh, as an option here um, if you want to link up to uh, specific uh, areas. Um, there's also other navigational ones uh, we've got things like call to action so these are essentially large kind of buttons or you could actually just add in there is actually just whoops a button as well so each of these three you could actually provide navigational links off but just to keep this looking nice and making it nice and simple and easy with large kind of options i'm going to use these um, hero tiles in a tiled view um, uh, beneath it sorry in the, in the layered view beneath this so before I actually go off and, and create this um, a, as an actual page I'm going to click on publish and I'm actually going to want to create this as a page template the reason being is I want to be able to reuse this multiple times I want to be able to have one for my human resources I want to have one for my IT and maybe my marketing and so on so on for all my different departments so now I'm going to click on save as page template because this is now my stock uh, layout. I need to give this uh, template a name. So I'm going to call this my department uh, page and then click on save page template. Now that's created me my page template ready to use. It looks pretty blank at the moment. That's because there's no content other than this text that's just padding this out um, for the time being. So the first thing that I'm then going to do is I need to go and actually create now my department pages from this page template. Um, so if I go back to the home page and click on new and then page and then I've got my department page template here. So I click on department page, then click on create page. And now this is where I'm actually now starting to create um, physical pages from the page template. So let's say, for example, this is going to be my uh, human resources page and click on publish. Uh, and now we've got a page that's created. Now I can start populating this. So now I might want to actually 
uh, change the background image, for example, up here. So I'll click on this, um, sorry, this change image icon here, click on stock images, and then let's just find a picture of, uh, say, people in an office, for example. Um, there we go. So we might choose this picture. Click on insert. And there we go. We've got a nice sort of picture starting off here. Now, I want to start creating. These are going to be links off to um, my knowledge article pages in a second. Um, so what I need to do is I just need to republish this. And what I suggest we do is to make sure it's nice and easy to find this page again in a moment. I'm going to click on the promote button here and I'm going to click on, uh, sorry, add page to navigation. Now, what that means is I can quickly get back to the human resources pages to add in knowledge articles underneath it later on. So now I've done that, I'm going to move on to the next bit. The next part of this is actually creating the knowledge page itself. So again, thinking back to this layer, we've got the, the very top of the knowledge base, which is our home page, which is going to help us navigate to either um, knowledge pages or um, the second layer down beneath it, which is the department page. So the layers would be the home page, the department page, and then the knowledge pages, which is underneath the, the department page. So let's look at creating the knowledge page as a page template as well. So back on my site, I'm going to go back to the home page. And when I click on new, click on page, I'm going to click on blank. So I want to start from blank again. Now, this is going to be my knowledge page. Now, again, what I'm going to do is create a very draft version of it, save it as a template, and then I'm going to start creating knowledge articles from that going forward. So let's say um, I'm going to style this on thinking about um, and when you're creating a template, it's good to think about uh, a realistic scenario, so so a real knowledge page. Um, you don't need to fill out all the content of it, as we've kind of already realized with that, the page template, um, but it's good to kind of make you think, well, what is actually going to be on this template? Um, typically, knowledge articles contain a bit, of a bit of text, a bit of information about what the knowledge article is about. It may uh, contain uh, quick links, so sort of useful links, uh, as well as useful documents, sort of documents, templates, things like that, which may be um, uh, actually fit related to that knowledge article. <clears throat> There's often FAQs, so frequently asked questions about the knowledge article to, to help people understand it quicker. Um, and then as I say, we're going to template all this up so we can uh, reissue this multiple times. So again, with the, the top layout, um, I'm going to choose to edit this and just to make it sort of stand out again I'm actually just going to use this image and title so it's slightly different than the normal page um, so you know that it's sort of customized and it's, it is actually a knowledge article page but it's different to using the same header as the department page and the home page so that we actually know that when we're transitioning between the different areas we've got a level of consistency of what is the home page what is the department page and what is a knowledge article page so this is where I might say, for example, it's going to be um, how to run a workshop. So I might be thinking for my consultancy department, uh, how do we run a workshop with a client? So again, uh, I've given it a title. I might want a little bit of text area across the top just to explain uh, what actually uh, this is. Oops, don't need to add that. I've got it in here. So again, I'm just going to go to my Laura Mipsum. I'm going to copy in some of this text. Now, usually in a knowledge article, you would expect actually um, that there would be quite a bit of text to start off with. Um, so I'm going to sort of break this out to make it look a little bit more like it's real text. Because I think it's always worth having a little bit of lorem ips in there because it helps people understand how much text you're actually anticipating th them to provide. Um, and it sort of m makes sure that you know what the page layout is going to look like eventually. Um, so there we go, we've got a nice bit of text in here. Again, I'm just going to change the background of this section. So by clicking on this section here, click on the edit section, I'm just going to change this maybe to this slightly lighter green color. Again, if I was to go with a solid green, it may confuse the kind of user experience about the difference between a department page and a knowledge article page. Just before we go any further, if you are enjoying this video, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, you don't realize how much it really does help the channel grow uh, by subscribing um, and liking, commenting on my videos. It's really helpful. I really do appreciate your time doing that. So then within our um, knowledge article, 
The other thing that you'll typically have is quick links because you might be linking out to other knowledge articles which may be related. So you could have related um, knowledge articles. Um, you might also have um, links which go externally as well. So it might be things which are going elsewhere um, to open up other websites and things like that. So let's take a little look at adding the quick links web part to our page. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can add this. Obviously, there's loads of different layout options, but I'm going to show you a very commonly used knowledge base uh, article layout. So to do this, I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to click on vertical section, which is going to give us this secondary area here. And this might be where, for example, that we do make this a solid color just to make sure that it stands out uh, against the content on the left hand side. Um, just to make it obvious with this text, um, I'm going to put in here and actually uh, as part of a playbook that I worked on with um, an American client last year, what I really liked is they actually went with an option, what they said, uh, what it is. And actually that text described what is the knowledge article. And then also what they included was what it is not. So sometimes when, with playbooks and knowledge articles and things like that, it can be a bit confusing about, well, what is it? What isn't it? Um, and maybe in the what isn't it section, you might link off to something else. So if someone was thinking, actually, this was related to uh, a training workshop rather than a requirements gathering workshop. Maybe I should be a bit clear with my title here. Um, actually, it could say, actually, this is a requirements workshop and it's not a training workshop. If you're interested in training workshop, then click here. And then maybe that links to the other page that I might set up later called training workshops, for example. Um, so quick links then, I would typically add on the right hand side. It's a great area for a little navigational bar. So I'm going to click on the web uh, part area here and I'm going to just search for quick links and select quick links in here. Now, there's a couple of different layout options in here, but I find that the button layout works the best. It looks quite nice and, and slick here. Now, quick links, um, I might want to rename and say useful links or quick links or um, anything like that. But let's just say this is going to be called related links. Um, or actually, I should probably say related pages. So these might be related pages to other types of workshops. And then I'm going to duplicate this web part and this is going to be my useful links so this might be external websites and pages and to add links um, is really easy and um, I'll show you this once we've kind of templated this um, we'll fill out the content um, we'll add some links into this but this is now uh, remember we're still just building on our template at the moment we're not building out the true content so we've now got our related pages our useful links in there as well so the next thing we might want to add to our template is useful documents. So useful documents may be things that you might want people to fill out forms or there might be PowerPoint presentations if it was related to say sales or something like that and you said it here is a bunch of sort of presentations or if it was um, like I'm doing a, a, a knowledge article for our staff to know how to run requirements workshops, we might give them um, templated documents say here's our requirements um, gathering documents now I find the best way to do this and again there's a couple of different ways of, of achieving this you could do dynamic kind of roll up of content based on tagging but that's getting quite advanced I want to keep this as simplistic as possible um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a uh, another document uh, sorry another web part by clicking on this web part area here and by typing in documents you can see we've got a web part here called document library so this is going to show me what document libraries we've got available so I'm now going to click on the documents option and within here um, I'm actually going to change the web part to say useful documents um, I don't think we need to necessarily see the command bar so I'm going to remove that um, and I don't think we need to see the see all button either um, so I'm going to remove that. So it keeps it nice, uh, neat, and simple. What we're going to do is later on when we actually create a knowledge article page from this, what we will do is we will actually um, jump directly into a folder um, for this useful document. So I'll show you that once we come around to actually creating the content. And then the final thing that I actually want to add onto um, the page is FAQs. Now, FAQs are frequently asked questions. It's a great way of quickly um, identifying to people uh, 
things which are commonly are asked and it's including the content in there so that people don't have to go and then ask a colleague or their line manager it quickly uh, sorts that out so people know exactly what to expect from this knowledge article there's a couple of different ways to achieve faqs inside of sharepoint i again um selfless plug i do have another video which goes into a lot more detail about frequently asked questions and how to embed them into sharepoint but i'm going to show you my favorite way of adding frequently asked questions into a sharepoint page so my favorite way to do this actually is to add in multiple sections onto a page and make them collapsible so to do this we click on the plus option here we click on one column and again i might want to make this a slightly different color just so it stands out from the rest of the page and make it gray I'm also going to choose that actually this is going to be a um, one third left um, option. So I'm going to put a little image in here. I'm going to put my text of my frequent last question in here. And then I'm going to make this collapsible. The reason being is A, it makes it much neater to be able to sort of make this tidier on the page. Um, but also it gives us a section name. So this is what our question will be, our frequent last question. And then this will be an image related to it. And this will be a bit of text that's related to it. I can choose whether or not the icon to expand this is on the left or the right hand side. Um, I think actually it looks quite nice just on the left. Um, and I can choose whether it's going to be expanded or not. Now, typically what I would do is I'd build out one FAQ, duplicate it a few times for the template, and only the first one I'd have expanded. I wouldn't have them all expanded just to keep them neat and tidy on the page. So just because this is a template, again, um, in the future when I create some content, I'll show you how we add some additional um, questions. But actually, um, just keep this sort of like some lorem ipsum type question. So how do I X, Y, Z? Let's add in an image into here. Again, it's just placeholders at this point in time. Uh, we're going to add some actual content to this later on. So let's just add in uh, some generic pictures of an office, for example. Again, we're going to add in some text. So just add in a text web part. I'm just going to go back to my lorem ipsum. And I'm just going to copy of lorem ipsum just to fill out this kind of space so we see what it looks like again i'm just going to add in a couple of line breaks just to sort of see what this would look like in reality usually it'd be something like this um there we go cool so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this now a couple of times so I'm going to duplicate them and change the question so something about when do i one two three and what I'll then do is I'll just change this to be expanded to collapsed. So actually, when we publish the page, this would automatically be collapsed. Again, I'm just going to duplicate that section another time. How will I know when ABC? Uh, and there we go. So that should then do us for our page template. So now if I click on publish, that's just I'm going to create uh, this first page, but then I'm actually going to click on save as page template because this is going to then be my knowledge article template. So I will just give it a name, so knowledge article, then click on save page template. So now that's my page template created. Um, so now all I need to do is if I go back to my home page, I'm going to click on new and then page. And then now I've got my knowledge article page. So I can select my knowledge article page. Now this is actually where I'm actually starting to create my page, uh, page, my knowledge articles now. So this is where I would then say, for example, um, how to run a requirements workshop. There we go. I might change the top image up here to make it look like uh, it's a, a meeting related, it's a requirements gathering workshop. So we go, we'll select an image like that. Now, if you're not happy where it sits on the page, you can always click on the set image focal point to set this somewhere like that. So we've got some sticky notes on here. Um, and then we've got uh, our content in here. So again, this is just what we would update the text. So if I was just to regenerate um, a little bit more fake text, um, there we go. Um, I'll just copy this like this. So this uh, this would be then me replacing the placeholder text. Imagine, I know it's more placeholder text, but let's just imagine this is me now filling out the page with actually what this how-to requirements workshop uh, is about. I'm then going to add any related pages um, to this. 
So if I had some other pages already created, I might sort of create, uh, I might just link to other pages. But obviously, it's something that you want to come back to later down the line once you've actually created some additional pages. At the moment, it's just this page um, that I've got created. So I'm just going to add this in a couple of times. Um, I might want to change the icons. So you can change the icons nice and easy by clicking this icon button here. And this is where you can actually choose all sorts of different icons. Microsoft have hundreds, if not thousands, of different icons. So you can come into here uh, and just find ones which you want to use, like so. Another little design top tip. I would just say if you if, choose between either having solid or the kind of the lighter color um, instead, and that just keeps a level of kind of consistency. You tend to find the icons are either quite, kind of thin uh, and, and kind of um, not colored in, not shaded in, or they're solidly colored. Um, so there we go. So I'll select them like that. Um, and that looks much better um, like that. Again, useful links. This might be linking out to third party websites. Let's just say, for example, if there was uh, any sort of requirements uh, gathering guidance for particular sort of uh, sectors or something like that. There might be some other websites we might want to publish and say, take a look at this. So let's just put some links to some third party web pages in here. There we go. We've got some additional useful links in here. And again, we can change the, the icons of these nice and easily as well. Um, then um, again, we would update the kind of the FAQs just by changing the text, text in here and the images if we wanted to. I'm not going to waste time by, by doing that because you've seen me change the text across the top uh, as well. Now, the final thing is we just need to change um, the useful documents. So we actually are looking at documents which are uh, related to this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click on publish the page. So we've now got this page. I'm going to click on add page to navigation to make sure I can get back to this nice and easily across the top. And then I'm going to come out of here. Now I need to go to my documents of um, this site. Click on documents. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some folders. So I'm going to create a folder for maybe each one of the departments which I'm going to be working with in here. So my department I'm working on at the moment is consulting. And then within this, I'm going to create a folder called uh, requirements workshop. Click on create. And then what I'm going to do is uh, add some documents into this. So click on upload, click on files. I'm just going to find some test files. Bear with me two seconds whilst I'm just opening up my test documents area. Do, 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 do. So, okay, cool. So let's just say um, I'm going to have these forms. Click on upload. So I've got multiple forms now that I recommend that people use as part of the workshop. So now all I need to do is go back to my page. Click on how to run a requirements workshop. And I should actually mention, if, if you if you forgot to add this to your top link area and you can't find your page at this point, just click on site contents across the top or click on the cog and then site contents and then just go to site pages and then you should find the page um, that you've just created here. So all the pages you've created so far are here. The templates you've created, if you ever want to edit the templates, by the way, are also in this folder. So you can find them in there. So we go back to our page in here, click on edit page. And then further down, um, so you can see it's automatically now um, looking at what the, the folders that we have in here. So what I'm going to do is say, well, I know it's in my consulting folder and then it's in my requirements workshop. So adding the folder path into the, in the folder here. So under consulting requirements workshop, then click on apply. And there we go. We can see the documents straight away that relate to this particular page. So that's all my content now created. I click on the republish option in here. So now I've got my how to run uh, requirements workshop, what it is, what it isn't, the FAQs across the bottom of the page, um, useful uh, documents from my requirements workshop, the useful links and the related pages. A little thing I've just noticed here is a little bit of a kind of glitchy bug is that often when you provide the folder name, it changes the name um, of the web part. So we might just want to put this back to say useful documents. There we go. I can't republish.
There we go. Cool. Um, the next thing we need, then need to do is go back a step and actually add this page to our human resources. Now, one step I'm going to do whilst I'm here is click on the edit option, and I'm just going to make this page a sublink under human resources, um, just so it actually, sorry, that shouldn't actually even be human resources. Um, let's just, um, we'll change that back in a second. So this actually should be, let's take into a human resource page. Okay. I made a little bit of a mistake there. Click on promote sublink, click on save. So it brings that back. I'm going to create a, a consulting department site now and then link to this particular page. So if I go back to the home page and then click on uh, new, click on new and then page and click on department page. And then this is going to be my consulting department page. I'm going to click on change image, click on stock image. I mustn't have saved I thought I created before the department page, but maybe I didn't save it. Um, click on, type in office, um, just to get some office kind of related images. Um, and then we're going to, uh, let's just put this in quite a nice image. Click on insert. So we've got our consulting department now page. And down here, this is where we're going to start linking off now. So what you can find here, with well, this is just say a little bit of text to say, this is some text about what you can find about the consulting department how we run workshops and capture requirements etc so yeah something along those lines um, and you might want to bolster that out you might want to pad it out just a little bit um, so let's just put that into a few rows like that cool so now what we want to do is we now want to start linking out this hero content to our pages. So we select this here and we can see recent content. Um, if you don't see it there, you can always go to site, then site pages, and then find the page that you're looking for. So how to run a requirements workshop. Select that there and you'll notice it'll automatically pull through the image for you as well as the title. But we can also change this a little bit. We can put a little bit of, of a kind of Laura Mipsum type of text into there as well as a little summary. So just copy and paste that from our Laura Mipson generator. Um, you can see it will cut it off um, and give you sort of like dot, dot, dot at certain points. So it might just be worth kind of cutting it down to a point where you know where the text will actually fit. Um, you can actually change the topic header. So you might want to change this to say consulting. So we can um, see that this is actually consulting related, or maybe we might change to say that it's workshop related so that we know that it's sort of workshop. We might have multiple ones which relate to being workshops further down. Um, we can change the call to action, say continue reading, or we might want to say uh, discover something like how to capture requirements, like something like that. Um, and then that's ready to go. So all we now need to do is click on publish and that will then publish this page. Um, and you can see, we can now click on to how, how to run requirements and that will then take us straight to this page. But first thing I want to do is just correct this mistake across the top. It's not human resources consulting that we're using. So I'm going to click on promote. I'm going to click on add page to navigation. So I've got my consulting department across the top and then click on edit. I'm going to remove human resources remember why you even added that and then click on move up um, and move this up oh hang on I might need to refresh for that just to appear there we go um, so let's just remove resources move up consulting and make this a sublink so now we've got consulting department um, how to run a requirements workshop is a knowledge article that sits underneath it like so so now, um, from this page, you can see I can click on how to run requirements, and that takes me straight to this particular page. Um, by clicking on consulting department, it takes me to this layer. Now, the final layer is actually then updating our home page. 
So this is where you might have the most variation is actually updating the home page of what do you want that to look like. You might include all sorts of different things, internet kind of functionality of news and things like that, and roll ups and, and that sort of thing. Um, but let's keep it nice and simple. Uh, essentially, what we want to be able to do is select a particular department to navigate to the department page. From the department page, we then select our knowledge pages. So let's take a look. Clicking back onto our uh, logo up here, we can take it back to the, the home page of the knowledge base. And again, it's nice and easy to change. I'm actually going to keep this really simple. Uh, I'm actually just going to use a tiled option again. So I'm just going to remove all the other sections beneath this. I'm going to make this a layered option. Um, and actually, then what I'll do is I'll change this uh, to be linking to my department page. So actually, my department page uh, I can find by going to site, site pages, uh, and then selecting on consulting department. And that'll then take me directly to that page. So it's just take a couple of seconds just for it to pull through the image. In fact, I'll just remember, because this is the out-of-the-box web part, um, what we need to change is click on this pencil option here and then click on background image. And it'll be set to custom image at the moment, but we want to set this auto-selected image so it's going to automatically pull it from the page. And then I'm going to select a, a, a title. Um, so it might be actually further down on here. We might want to select the options of show a topic header. And this is where I typically put the name of the department. And then... Um, the sort of tagline might be more something like um, discover how our uh, requirements and training department operates, for example. Um, you can give a little bit of a sort of description in here. Um, so this is a little bit of secondary kind of text area. Again, just for now, I'm just going to pop in a little bit of lorem ipsum just to fill that sort of space out and then I'm going to leave a learn more here which is just my call to action so now you can see this is how I, I've simply created now my knowledge base so there's my top layer area by clicking through to this it's going to take me through to my department page from my department page and get to my knowledge page it is a little bit of kind of like best to build this in reverse so kind of build your knowledge pages then build your department pages then um, your home page just so you've got a bit of content just to start linking things through so if now I click on republish um, you can now see I've got this option of uh, clicking through to consulting. From consulting, I can then see how to run a requirements workshop. And that's then taking me through to uh, my actual knowledge article about how to run a specific workshop. So there's a couple of additional things that some people add on top of this, I should mention. Sometimes people add in things like a little web part, say a useful contact. Um, so... Uh, that might be uh, a, a particular person to reach out to. Some people add in like a back button, um, but that, that starts adding a little bit more additional navigation that you've got to add the, 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 the link back to the relevant department page and things like that. Um, and also from things like the home page, it might be that you might want to add a little bit of text to sort of explain what the knowledge base is, how to use it, what type of content uh, you might find on here. You might even want to add in your own kind of quick links onto here to go to specific knowledge pages that people want to jump start directly to. Um, what I would recommend as well, the top layer, um, is you might want to also create a layer um, up here for, uh, let's just create a label for departments. So it might be that actually uh, we say these are departments and then we'll add this uh, make sublink so now we've got our consulting department in fact actually I think it looks better just called consulting click on save and then we've got this option here so we can see consulting so as you start then adding more layers to this so say for example we might then have a HR Let's promote that uh, we might have IT as different departments click on save um, you can then see we start building this out and then we have links that take us directly to this because everyone's probably heard that concept before that you don't want to click more than three times to get to content and that really speeds things along by actually um, jumping directly to those links rather than having to click on departments then consulting we can go directly to maybe some commonly accessed uh, knowledge articles you can also find out uh, how popular a particular knowledge article is. So if you navigate to a particular knowledge article, and this works for any of the pages, 
you can click on the analytics button and you can actually see how many times that page has been viewed, the page traffic, average time spent on the page. Um, and that gives you an idea of how popular things are. So you might want to only include the very top five most popular knowledge articles, for example, underneath here. And that gives you a good idea of which ones are popular. I hope you enjoyed that video all about how to build out your SharePoint knowledge base. Um, if you did, please do like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any questions, comments, anything like that, use the comments box below and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you very much for your time for watching this today. And look out for future videos as well, all about how to get the most out of SharePoint Online.